Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we celebrate and worship today. We're going to celebrate two amazing things today, uh, Pentecost, which is the birth of the church universal, and also Memorial Day as we remember those who gave their all that we might preserve our freedoms. And we're so excited to have you each with us this morning. We also want you to take a look at all the opportunities in the bulletin uh, for Bible study. Wednesday night, uh, Thursday morning, and Tuesday night. A couple of them are online on Zoom, and you can reach them on the banner and the um, FUMC website. Um, and then we have a Thursday morning in person here in the parlor. So we'd love to have you join us. Next Sunday, we will be honoring our graduates. And we also, um, within the next couple of weeks, are going to honor some of our new members as well. We get to celebrate the wonderful music ministry of Ben, uh, who unfortunately is, it's a loss for us, but a gain for his family that he's moving back to be closer with his family. But let's just say a thank you to Ben for all the wonderful music. <laughs> and now let us stand together uh, for our opening hymns.
Let us affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> if you'll take a look around and wave to one another. So good to see everybody here. Even up in the balcony there too. <laughs> Make sure you don't forget them. <laughs> Wonderful. Good to have you. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21 the story of the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were seated, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each of them could hear in their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, all the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, oh, they have had too much wine. And then Peter stood up with the 11. He raised his voice and he addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who have come now who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. <laughs> no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In those days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of our Lord, and everyone 
who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And from 1 Corinthians 12, 3 through 13, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit For there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gift of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another to distinguish between the spirits, to another to speak in different languages, and to another the interpretation of the language. All of these are works of one and the same spirit that he distributes to each one just as he determines. Just as a body has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We were baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were given one spirit to drink. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your presence. May my words become your message for each of us, your beloved children. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather today, we celebrate Pentecost. It's 50 days since Easter. Did you realize? It's also 50 days since Passover. At that very first Pentecost, these were Jewish pilgrims coming from almost every nation around the world, and they were people of different languages and cultures who all believed in God and went to that pilgrimage into Jerusalem. And what they were going to be celebrating was that after Passover, 50 days later on Mount Sinai, Moses was given the tablets of stone, the Ten Commandments, and this is what they were coming to Jerusalem to celebrate, the gift of the Torah, the gift of the law of God. What they're going to find out is that on that same day, God is going to give even more. Remembering the gift of the Torah, Peter will share with them the gift of Jesus Christ, and they in turn will see the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, who doesn't like a birthday party? We love birthday parties. In fact, Lauren's birthday's today, right? Where'd she go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you are, there you are. Big 21, the big 21, right? <laughs> we have exciting things going on when we celebrate birthdays. We're thinking of what can we bring and give to the one we honor and celebrate well, believe it or not, that is one of the things that was on the minds of these Jews coming from all around the world, to give what was called the first fruits, their harvest, their animals, their treasures, their time. They were coming to give gifts back to God, thanking him for the Torah. They had no idea that they would be recipients of such a great gift as the Holy Spirit. Now, you and I also get to celebrate the birthday of this church in November, November 12th. We are going to celebrate the beginnings of this church as First United Methodist and Park Temple came together. And both churches have their own history to share with us. And those churches... Uh, can claim 1903 as the beginning of the first congregation in Fort Lauderdale, gathering under a brush arbor. And we're going to be sharing some vignettes from our history committee each month as we prepare and get ready for November. Even our bishop will join us, and we have already been inviting former pastors, for families that have moved away, and we're hoping to fill the place we're also going to invite the five churches that we started uh, back in the 1950s. Perhaps you didn't even realize we started Christ United Methodist Church. We started Plantation United Methodist Church. We started Aldersgate. We started Wesley Chapel, which is now the New Life Haitian Mission. We started Melrose Park. All of those friends and families will return and gather with us. Now, birthday parties are fun. Back to Pentecost. It actually was, as I mentioned, a Jewish holiday. Even the name Pentecosta is a Greek word for 50. 50 days since Passover, 50 days since Easter. The Passover was known as these 50 days of learning to live and follow God, to honor his law. It was called the Shavuot, giving of the Torah. They would hear the reading of the Ten Commandments. The tradition involved that people from all over the world would make this pilgrimage to Jerusalem. 
I don't think that it was lost on the disciples that when Jesus said, you will go out into the world and make disciples, the world had shown up on that day. All the people from the world came to Jerusalem. They were acknowledging that they were receiving a gift from God. They were ready to give of themselves, give of their time, their talent, their treasure. One-tenth was something that they had learned about, giving back to God. Jesus' Jewish followers experienced this divine gift of the Holy Spirit the same day that Jewish representatives from all the world have shown up. They are particularly amazed that they can hear this message in their own language. They were not used to having someone who could speak their language when they traveled a far distance. It's a reversal of the Old Testament Tower of Babel. If you remember the Tower of Babel story, perhaps you don't remember it, but people are building towers really to honor humanity and honor themselves, and they start to speak in different languages, and they can't communicate. No one can understand each other, and it was a sense in which human pride was causing us to divide, to not understand one another. So at this event, people from around the world are being understood and understanding. I believe it was not lost in the disciples. When they are told by Jesus just a few weeks early, in fact, 10 days earlier, you will take this message from Jerusalem into Judea into Samaria into all the world. And Peter looks out and what does he see? They're, they're here. The world is here. Now, by the gift of the Spirit, what once was chaotic and divisive is now coming together. By the gift of the Holy Spirit, each one is hearing and understanding. By the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are seeing the whole of creation beginning again to knit together for good and for God. Now, believe it or not, Jeremiah the prophet prophesied about this exact event. We know it as the New Covenant. In chapter 31, verses 33 through 34, this is what Jeremiah the prophet says. On that day, God's law, the Torah, will be written not on tablets of stone, but on the human heart. A new covenant This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, says the Lord. After those days, I will put my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach the neighbor or say to one another, do you know the Lord? Because they all will know me from the least to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sin no more. Like any other birthday party, we are meant to bring gifts on Pentecost. The gifts of our presence, the gifts of our first fruits. You see, we as Christians take vows for our time, our talent, and our treasure to build up the church not for a building, but for continuing the message of Jesus Christ. It is housed in a building, but then we take it out. You see, our gifts enable us to house an amazing preschool, an aftercare, a daycare to assist families with quality childcare and guidance. My first experience of Christ was in a preschool in Miami, in Kendall. We went to church, but to know him personally, I was four years old. It was in the preschool. Our gifts enable us to partner with local and international ministries that impact real life in real time. 
I think about our little schoolhouse, a daycare for kids, for families that are trying to get out of poverty. They're trying to work. They need quality child care for free. And so we partner with the little schoolhouse. Their graduation was here on Wednesday night. We gather school supplies and backpacks for them. We do our Christmas angel tree for them, about 50 children. We partner with uh, wonderful outreach ministries like Second Chance. We just had a wonderful event occasion this Thursday when we dedicated the entrance of their building with Pat Owen's memory and the, it had the mission statement and what they have accomplished. And that, she started that as a church member when she was 75 years old. Can you imagine being 75 and saying, you know what? I feel God is calling me to start a new ministry. And she researched where were the gaps out in our community it's called a hand up, not a hand out. She helped them get ID cards. She helped them get tools and training to get back into the workforce. We have a partnership with Hope South Florida with mobile showers and feeding programs and assistance to vets and homeless mothers. We house them here with faith in action when they're taking turns before they can get an efficiency apartment. These are the ways that the Holy Spirit is still empowering us to do great things. What about the children's home? Helping kids in crisis to have a safe space to live and to thrive after experiencing trauma. Perhaps it was neglect or abuse or a parent was incarcerated or drug addicted. They need a place to feel they belong. Now internationally, our partners are doing amazing things, and everything that we give of our time, our talent, and our resources multiplies their effort. Did you know that the church in San Cristobal would not exist without us? Did you know that? Why? Because we pay the pastor's salary. Did you realize that? Part of what we're doing is making sure that that part of Cuba, one hour west of Havana, has a ministry. They have so many people. When I went to preach there a few years ago, they can only fit about 60 in their sanctuary. There were people looking in the windows. They wanted to come hear what I had to say. I noticed just this weekend they had a beach baptism and there were so many people lined up. It looked like that movie, Jesus Revolution, where the people are just coming hungry for God. Did you know that we partner with an orphanage in Guyana, South, South America? We've been there as well for many years. Diana and Bill Upchurch, Upchurch helped start that ministry. Start with One Kenya a water filter ministry. It's brought clean water to thousands of families who used to bury their children because of waterborne disease. These are a few of our extensions through the Holy Spirit of God's grace and goodness and mercy. You see, Pentecost celebrates God's gifts. God gave the Torah, the law. God gave his only son, Jesus the Christ. God gave the Holy Spirit. We remember all that God has given us. It reminds us also that God is a God of order, not of chaos. If you ever feel like there are so many messages confusing you, remind yourself that God is a God of order. There are patterns. There are principles. Return to God. As we listen and we pray, as we study, as we worship, God's Holy Spirit is what is guiding us, giving us equipment, tools to navigate life without fear, without confusion, a steady anchor 
holding us fast, even in the storms of life. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, had his own Pentecost experience May 24th, 1738. We call it Aldersgate Day. In his journal, he says he went to a Bible study reluctantly. Now, he was a pastor. He wasn't leading the Bible study. A friend had told him, you ought to check this Bible study out. It's really amazing. But it says even this young pastor, probably about 26, 27 years old, was like, oh, somebody asked me to do a Bible study. They're going to expect me to show up. I better go. That's the way he went. Now, have you ever gone to church or Bible study that way? Oof. They keep asking me. They keep telling me about it. I don't know. Sometimes I just need to rest on Sunday. Sometimes I can't get up. Or maybe it was somebody in a church that hurt your feelings or something happened and you're like, I'm going to have to try this again, but it's not easy. John Wesley went reluctantly. But what happened? As he's hearing the Bible study and listening, the message is hitting him right in the heart. He says, at about a quarter before nine, I felt my heart strangely warmed, for I felt I did trust in Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sin, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Perhaps the language seems a little antiquated, but what he's saying is, I've been a pastor, but I have been a sinner. I'm broken. I needed healing. I was even a little disillusioned when I was in Savannah, and things didn't go just the way I was hoping in my ministry and mission. You see, if you don't know his backstory, John Wesley had already been ordained He'd already gone with his brother to be a missionary in Savannah, Georgia. But if you know anything about Savannah at that time period, it was a debtor's prison release camp. It's where people who were in debt in London were released. He's trying to minister to people who don't really want order and discipline. He also fell in love with a woman named Sophie Hopke, a woman who rejected him. And he's feeling that when he returns to London. Wow. I went reluctantly. If I wasn't leading it, what was I going to do? I was going to listen. And what happened? The Holy Spirit spoke to him. He ended up having his most profound, life-changing experience of God You see, everything began to shift and change. All of a sudden, this man who could barely get a few people in Savannah got huge crowds in London. I mean, huge. There are thousands that eventually show up to hear this man, John Wesley. And why did he have to preach outside? Because the Bishop of London said, you're inviting too many riffraff those dirty coal miners, those prostitutes, those children without shoes. Don't bring them in our churches anymore, John. This is who John Wesley was. The church grew and grew and grew. Not because he was a great preacher, not because he was an amazing man, but because he was filled with God's spirit. You see, God works like this, even in spite of us, to reach the world. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. Parish means church. The world is my church. In a time when the Anglican priests were saying, the church is my world. Just the people within the doors. That's it. John says, no, it's the people outside just as much as the people inside. This is our church. 
If Pentecost tells us anything, it's that God will provide what is needed to accomplish his purpose. You see, St. Peter had been the one who said, I don't know Jesus, when he was asked right before the crucifixion. I don't know him because he didn't want to be the next one on a cross. That same Peter preaches 50 days after Easter and 3,000 people documented, 3,000 people come to Christ. That same man. Even this week, we saw God's provision for our own church. When I first got here, we had a agreement. Our third floor was rented by Hope South Florida Executive and by Samaritan Counseling, which is a wonderful, it was a Christian counseling center, and they both paid rent, and they were both nonprofits. And then after they were moving on to a new building, a new place, we had another partner here, my second year here, called Church by the Glades. They rented the sanctuary on Sunday nights. All of this equipment that you see was part of the agreement that they would pay in kind to us. We didn't pay a penny for these screens, the microphones. It was all from them, part of their rent payment. And now we have another partner, a private school that wants to rent a portion of our third floor called Exceed. Again, a provision if you don't see it, I do. God has provided. It's not just what we can give with our tithes and offerings, but what we can get through the building and the location to continue the work of Christ in the heart of the city. God is still sending us partners. You see, the way that God shows up gives of time God gave us the Torah to live by his laws God gave us Jesus Christ to live by his love and forgiveness God gave us his spirit to live with courage and conviction for God so loved the world he gave his only son these are 50 days after Easter. May we continue what Christ began in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our songs of reflection remind us of the gift that so many gave for Memorial Day, the gift of their life that we might have freedom.
Let us pray. Lord, as we come before you, we are so mindful that you are the greatest giver of all, that your generosity has poured forth a guiding law, a giving Christ, an empowering spirit. May we be found faithful. Forgive us for ways that we have been so reluctant. We have missed the opportunity. Instill in us the courage to go even when we don't quite feel like it, to hear the word, to study the word, to pray together, receiving your spirit. O Lord, we are so grateful for the witness in every generation of your people who have followed faithfully, for those who have served in the military and lost their lives, that our freedoms might be held intact for us. The great sacrifice, as Jesus said, no greater gift than you give your life for those you love. O Lord, we pray for all the families who are in a time of grief or transition, making decisions, difficulty. We also pray in praise and celebration with those experiencing new opportunities, new life, new birth. Surround us, O oh God, with the presence and power of your spirit that we as a congregation will sense your nearness that we as a people will reveal your spirit of grace, your spirit of prophecy, your spirit of redemption and love, that we would embody it even as you told us we would as the body of Christ. O oh God, enable us to be your faithful people. As we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I offer uh, the closing hymn and benediction, I did want to ask if there was anyone who had lost a loved one or a family member in the service. Uh, we have, uh, the ushers have some ribbons to share. Uh, I know Stephen, your uncle, uh, was, had passed in the war. Anyone else who had a family member? Yes, Tony. Tony will make sure that Tony has one. Yes. Okay. And Tony, who was it in your family? Your father? Grandfather, your grandfather. We remember your grandfather for his service. During Veterans Day, we'll have an opportunity to honor all of our veterans as well. But yes. Brother. Your brother. Oh, wow, Chris. I'm so sorry for your loss. And thank you for his service. Let us offer a prayer of thanks for all who have sacrificed. Oh Lord, we are so grateful in awe and wonder of those who offered themselves, those who fought in battles to preserve this land, to preserve the freedom that we too often take for granted. May we always know that freedom is not free. It is very costly. We offer this prayer of gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand for our closing hymn, Sweet, Sweet Spirit.
Before we offer the benediction, I do remind you that we have a time of fellowship in the parlor right next door. We'd love to meet with you and see you. Uh, we also uh, sit back down after the benediction and just listen to the last piece of music that they worked so hard to prepare. And if you have any gifts, uh, tithes and offerings, there are pedestals placed as you uh, leave. Let us receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and grant you that new covenant, the forgiveness of your sin, that you may walk in faithfulness all of your day. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat>